So by now, I hope that most of you saw this, but if you haven't watched the latest episode of Real Time with Bill Maher, um, it was one of those episodes where you have to watch it. It's it's a must-see. And I never say that about Real Time with Bill Maher because he's become insufferable over the years as he shifted to the right. In fact, I was a little bit apprehensive about talking about this because I'm currently in a copyright dispute with HBO because I used a Bill Maher clip in a segment from a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I'm legally allowed to share their clips under fair use if I follow the guidelines of fair use, which I do. Uh, but I thought that if I react to it this way, where, you know, I'm doing a screen share and I'm stopping it uh, all the time to talk about it, maybe it wouldn't be picked up by their copyright detectors. I'm not necessarily sure, but either way, Crystal Ball was on the panel this week, and this is the first time that Bill Maher has brought on a leftist in probably years, and it really goes to show you why he doesn't do this more frequently. This is because leftists bring facts, data, and they make the case, and it makes Bill Maher look like a hack, and he is a hack, but just watch when you see the way that they interact with each other. Crystal Ball, she came prepared, she knew the facts, and it shows, so let's watch. Refer this to the Justice Department. Why? Why isn't that moving into that realm? And if we don't, it will just happen again, no? I think that there is a fundamental lack of seriousness from the Democrats when it comes to solving the problems, not only that led us to January 6th, which I actually think is the deeper issue and the deeper question here. How did we get to a place where a good percentage of the country is convinced the election was stolen, where they would listen to this maniac, where they actually think that they're patriots storming the Capitol to restore democracy? How did we get there? And then you can see that they're not actually serious about how existential this threat is by okay. the fact that they are propping up candidates who believe this nonsense. I mean, in Pennsylvania, right. this is what's actually really scary. But the Democratic Party is redoing the Pied Piper strategy, and they're propping up MAGA extremist candidates actually running ads attacking rhinos for voting to impeach Trump. Democrats are paying for these ads because they want to run against the more extremist candidates. Uh, they did this in 2016. Hillary Clinton did this with Donald Trump, and it ended in catastrophic failure, and they're still doing it. So for Crystal Ball to make this point, I don't think anyone has heard this point who watches cable news ex exclusively. If you listen to YouTube shows, you've heard this, but this may be the first time they've been exposed to this fact about the Democratic Party, how fundamentally unserious they are. My question. I mean, yes, if a guy robs a liquor store, let's look into why he did that. But also, he needs to be arrested for robbing the liquor store. He's so smart. Yeah, let's look into why, course. what was in his mind, and like he was yeah. poor. Okay. And yes, well, you should totally understand the consequences of this, and I think that Donald Trump is a menace, and he may have committed crimes. But he did let's commit think crimes. about Just the consequences it. of prosecuting a former president who might run again. You know, oh. Gerald Ford, I'm not saying the consequences. Yeah, because if, if we don't prosecute him, then that's going to be worse than prosecuting him. That's not to say that it wouldn't be a shit show if Trump was prosecuted, but it's either you hold presidents to the same standard that we all are held to, or you let them get away with whatever, and they grow more and more tyrannical with each president that we elect. It just, this is, this is just ridiculous here. In 1975, you know, after what, 74, um, in the Watergate crisis, he did the right thing by pardoning Richard Nixon. You know, that was a long national nightmare and it ended. But, and I don't, and I, and I, I just think we Nixon have to be very did, careful about, about how we do this. This is cuck shit. Nixon did not try to undermine democracy itself. He, well, well, he, he was he, breaking he, the law. He, he, yes, he bro Trump broke I the mean, law. Here's a couple of things. So first of all, I, I actually have That's no issue with Trump, Trump being prosecuted, and I have a lot of issue with elites being left unaccountable for the crimes that they commit, number one. Yep. Number two, that's not going to solve our problem. Do you think that Ron DeSantis is going to be way better than Donald Trump? Yes. He's I mean, not that's gonna, my issue. He's not going to be the enemy yes, of I democracy do. in the same I, way I'd that like Trump to answer is. that. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. I don't know how you can say that. Because he's clearly modeled himself in the footsteps of Donald Trump. Ron, I mean, Ron you DeSantis, see the well, way that these people shown, are yeah, I think that them being overconfident here is going to lead to the downfall of democracy. Trump absolutely has changed the game for GOP politics. But to say that other Republicans, after seeing Trump incite an insurrection and possibly get away with it they're not going to follow in his footsteps i mean ron DeSantis is copying victor orban victor orban in hungary 
consolidated power by weaponizing hate. He did don't say gay laws in Hungary, and that's what Ron DeSantis is doing. Even down to the strategy that Viktor Orban uses after uh, passing these laws that forced teachers into the closet, he said, oh, well, I'm an ally of LGBTQ plus people. And Ron DeSantis now just last week said, oh, well, we won't tolerate hate in Florida after he fomented hate for the past year against LGBTQ plus people. So for them to think that Trump is the only fascist and if you defeat Trump, fascism is done. That's incredibly naive. With that being said, Trump is the biggest, uh, most clear and present danger to democracy. But I think it's incredibly naive on Bill Maher's part to think that if we just defeat Donald Trump and prosecute him, that's it. The threat of fascism, the threat of, you know, a uh, threat to democracy that the GOP poses is over. Absolutely not. And that's what Crystal Ball is trying to to get through to them. And also she's trying to make the case about how you can't just not be fascist. Democrats have to deliver for people so there is no popularity, no appeal to fascism. Because I And I've made this point before too on the show. If you are desperate, if you can't put food on the table, if you struggle to make a living wage, then you don't know why you're in this position. But if a demagogue comes along and says it's because of immigrants or queer people you're more likely to believe that. That's not to say that if we had socialism that, you know, racism would go away because I'm not a class reductionist. I don't believe that. But that is to say that people would be less susceptible to radicalization if they weren't so fucking desperate. And this is what liberals like Bill Maher refuse to comprehend. Contempt for democratic pro he hasn't shown footsteps. contempt for democratic he's, processes. He's yes, not he has. certifiably insane. That too. That's a that great too. one to start <laughs> off with. He has his own police for election integrity. What are they talking about? Uh, you know what Ron DeSantis won't be doing? He won't be uh, poop tweeting every day. He won't be like having feuds with Ben. As if mean tweets were the core problem with Donald Trump. Moving on to the second clip, also courtesy of Case Study QB. Um, I believe this is the part that went the most viral that I wanted to share. Let's talk a little politics because I see uh, Joe Biden... Oh, boy. His, uh, I, I mean, every midterm, the party out of power usually gets creamed. Um, I mean, the party in power. And But this year, I mean, Biden's approval rating with 18 to 34 is 22 percent among Hispanics. This is part of the base. 24 percent. But yet a couple of weeks ago, Bill Maher was shitting on, on the idea of canceling student debt. Wow, he's losing young people, but yet he should do nothing to win young people over. I just like I feel like they want to have it both ways. They want to shit on young people and do nothing to reach out to young people, but also complain when young people don't deliver for Democrats. It's truly a bizarre mentality, but this is the typical liberal elite mentality. Forty nine percent among African-Americans. That's the base base. And that's what got him the job. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he's calling himself Hunter's dad now. No, uh, I'm just. <laughs> Um, but there's whispers now that are getting louder and louder that he needs to say, I'm not running again. Okay, I did my job. I removed the mm -hmm. queen from the board, or ho however chess works, but... <laughs> <sighs> so Trump Mike is kind of a drag queen. <laughs> He's a very camp. I wanted you to... He's a real... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're right on that. He's totally camp. He's totally it's camp. Very camp. With the hair. Oh, my and God. And spitting all that ridiculous, like, outrageous a, comments all the time. A pla I just don't find this funny at all. It's very stupid. Very, very stupid comedy. I don't even think this is boomer humor. My older audience members will have to tell me if they think that their friends would find this funny because this is genuinely stupid. Bouffant yeah. like a diner waitress? He's basically the first gay president. We should be yeah. honest about it. Okay. I mean, yeah. So glad you said it because I've been thinking it. We've all been thinking it. Uh, so here's my question about Joe Biden for you two. Has he pandered to the far left, A, too much, B, <laughs> too little, not at all? Because uh, AOC would say not at all. Well, if you look Other people would say he panders way too much to the far if left. If you look at the... Okay. This is brain rot. To think this, to say this, you have brain rot if you think this. Now, thankfully, there is, for the first time in years, again, a leftist on the panel to correct him. And this is where Crystal Ball claps them cheeks. 
trajectory of his presidency. At the beginning of his presidency, he did some of the things that myself as a person on the left would like him to see. He passes the COVID relief bill, and lo and behold, he had very high approval ratings. You're not always on the left. Then, I am on the left. Uh, I'm, a, the I'm economic, a Bernie the, Sanders left. There's a populist not, economic left, so, then there's the woke left. These okay, are two okay. separate. In any case, let's... What is that? What is... What does that even mean? There's the populist economic left and then there's the woke left. I don't even know what that word means. The term woke is used so much that it has no meaning effectively at this point. So I don't even know what that means. Why would you even disaggregate the woke left from the economic left? About what he's actually done. So in the beginning of the administration, he passes that. Very high approval rating, doing extraordinarily well. And she's right here. When he here, puts absolutely out the left agenda in the Build Back Better, and then it fails, and he stops delivering well, for the American people, uh, explain, that's when he falls off. What do you mean off. by the left agenda in the Build Back Better? Well, there's Just universal pre-K. It's okay. not everything that I would want. Right. No Medicare for all. There's no Green New Deal. But you had universal pre-K. You had affordable child care. You had elder care. You had an expansion of Medicare. You had things that would have done. And to be clear... She has to put meat on it and explain these policies because Bill Maher probably doesn't know what was in Build Back Better because I doubt he followed it. ...for the American people. That falls apart, partly because of Manchin, Cinema, Parliament, all of that. That falls apart. And since now the American people are feeling incredible pain with inflation and gas prices and unable to put food on the table and put gas in the car, and he's basically seeded the ground and said, eh, there's not much I can do. I just hope the Fed gets this under control. Yeah, the approval ratings have fallen off a cliff. That has nothing to do with the left. I wish the left had more yep. power. In fact, I think the left is the only part of the political spectrum that has offered anything to deal with inflation, gas prices in the current yeah, economic I mean, I situation think. that doesn't just involve, hey, let's trigger a recession and kill people's wages. Well, I mean, part of this inflationary problem is because we put too much money into the economy. There's way too much government spending, and that's why we have inflation. So that's a large part of that. I mean, most of the inflation is from corporations taking advantage of the headlines. When the news reports that inflation is going to become a thing, corporations then increase prices to increase profits – because people are expecting it. Like, it's part of a momentum effect as well. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy in many ways. But that's not the only explanation for it. But the difference is that they will make it seem as if that is the only explanation. You know, when you put money in people's hands, well, that's the problem. So the best thing that you can do is, I guess, um, not put money in people's hands, do more austerity perhaps. Like, I don't want to speak for him, but Crystal Ball is actually uh, going to explain what's going on here. An explanation that... I don't know if they've ever heard. Um, it's just basic is, economics. And that is secondly, not basic economics. We had this thing called a pandemic. We had a supply chain crisis. Okay. And oh, yeah, by the way, well, there's well, a war. It played a role. It's played so a role. So to act like the only reason okay. we have and, problems and you now act, is because people got a little bit of money in their whoa, bank whoa, whoa, account whoa. is just not honest. And you, a little bit of money, Boom. they got more than we spent in World War II. So you but, act, don't act but like hold the on, hold Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Don't act like you said don't act. Really quick here. So he's getting really smug, really arrogant because he doesn't like when people get money. But this is when Crystal Ball smacks him the fuck down and he hasn't been put in his place like this in a very long time act like we had to react to the pandemic exactly the way we did we hacked it we, we had to spend did okay, trillion but how trillion about the, on the trillions compared to that other the countries Federal reserve shot at wall street for some reason people don't what? get upset about I, that how much, and that fueled that? the trillions of dollars the federal reserve shot at wall street to shot. backstop the stock market and the bond market no one well, gets upset about that uh, even though well, that was a massive I, I don't factor know what you're in inflation talking about. what do you mean shot at wall street well, what are we talking about that we're talking about buying assets buying stocks buying bonds buying treasury bills when? so that they expand the balance this? sheet this is during the crisis Bill. the coronavirus crisis when the stock market crashed that is what the Fed did. They went into action. They shot But the stock market didn't the... crash no. during COVID. Now it's they, crashing. It it's crash. crashing now. It crashed and the Fed came in and backstopped Bill. it. That's what happened. What, it crashed so and we never heard I'm about saying. it? No, it crashed. Go back and look at it. I think when, it's when... All... This is genuinely embarrassing. This man has a television show and he doesn't follow basic fucking news. It is humiliating cliff when? the treasury bond market stopped functioning and the fed took extraordinary action it's never taken in history I don't somehow remember no one that. gets Let upset the first week of the i've seen this clip so many times and it's still mind-blowing to me at this point somehow nobody gets upset about the rich people who got 
tons of money and tons of support, oh, yeah. way more than working class people did. Sure but, they oh, do. my God, people were able to feed their kids and they had a little bit of money in their bank accounts. It was the worst thing in the world. No. That is one small part of the inflation story. And it is, by mm -hmm. the way, not the only thing that we can deal with to get out of this mess. Well, gas so prices. Biden is it a small part, Jimmy, gas, price, it... gas prices we can largely attribute to an administration that's been waging war on the fossil fuel industry. That's ridiculous. And now they demand... more than ever. I mean, that's a talking U.S. Point. It's U.S. production. No, no, no. Okay. No, a talking point is saying that that Biden waged the war on the fossil fuel industry. He's, <laughs> he's, I swear to God, like this is not a very substantive critique and I don't have to be as substantive because I feel like crystal ball really comes with the facts, but these people have worms in their fucking brains. They just, they consume nothing but corporate media, corporate propaganda, and, and every single thing that they say is at the behest of these, of these fucking uh, companies. Oh, well, you know, this administration waged a war on the fossil fuel industry. They're making record fucking pros profits. They're doing stock buybacks. Does that seem like, you know, an industry that's fucking hurting you dipshit? God damn. U.S. production is up. Well, it will be yep. at record levels next year. Okay, well, the fossil precisely. fuel companies themselves are flush with cash, but will not invest in new drilling because they would la rather give it no. to their okay. shareholders. Okay. Right, That's wait. the truth of what's well, happening. Well, here's the, here's the truth. I mean, I just read it today. And if you notice, he had no response. The other guest, no response. Because what she's saying is undeniably true. It is em empirically correct. So they can have these talking points and accuse her of having talking points. Oh, that's a talking point. But she's speaking facts. Look it up. Google it. So, you know, this is why they don't want to bring lefties on because they can't just say things that is, you know, a talking point that they hear on MSNBC or Fox News. They actually have to back up what they're saying. And if they say something incorrect, a lefty will say, actually, this is the truth. Here's the facts. Here's the data. And they don't like that. They like to live in their bubble. And, you know, it gets uncomfortable when he ha he's faced with actual arguments that he hasn't heard. In 2020, Biden said no more drilling on federal lands. No more. Uh, no look, Keystone I'm, Pipeline. Yeah. No. Oh, okay, is, and I'm not saying And, and also and, and, and antagonizing I, Saudi Arabia. Oh, now he's going on. back to Saudi Arabia uh, hat in hand. Wait, wait, wait. wait let, let us finish. Just uh, how is he antagonizing Saudi Arabia? Because he wouldn't, he he signed an executive order saying I'm not going to sell them weapons for you know offensive purposes. But then he's like, oh, okay, well I'm still going to sell them weapons, but just because these are defensive, as they do a genocide in Yemen. I mean, every single thing that they say it oozes disingenuity, and I feel like you know if you're a normie and you consume this, there's got to be at least some instinct in you, like your bullshit detector has got to be going off. All right. Saying. All right. And then you can shit up. Well, and, and, uh, <laughs> antagonizing the Saudis well, with his with his Iran well, deal yes. policy, and now he's going back to them hat in hand to get. He hasn't joined the Iran deal again. Uh, I mean, uh, this is just—it's so fundamentally untrue. Antagonizing them with the Iran deal policy. The Iran deal. If Biden wanted to get back into the Iran deal, don't you think he would have been back into it? There's so much pushback against the Iran deal, which was a peace deal, by the way. To increase their production. But I bet you're in favor so of the Russian oil ban. Uh, because yeah, the yeah. Saudis are well, great Russia humanitarians. Is, Russia is raping a country the, right now. Yeah, and the Saudi Saudis Arabia, are amazing humanitarians. No, I didn't I mean, say be, that. Be I didn't say that. There are allies. Here, there right? are allies. Okay. Well, so listen, okay. but hold. But well, instead of. Let's just talk about why these things really yeah. happen. But what about what Saudi is doing to Yemen? I mean, there's no consistency. And that's that's great that Crystal pointed that out. Be consistent. They're not consistent. They're fundamentally inconsistent. It's just whatever benefits corporate America. And I don't know if like this is a literal shill for like some corporate fucking industry. I have no idea. But it's a distinction without a difference because everything that he's saying, he's just parroting from mainstream media. Who does get advertising dollars from the fossil fuel industry, health insurance companies? So, you know, with time, what people in mainstream media, what the pundits in mainstream media say, it just reflects what their advertisers want because they don't want to scare away those advertising dollars. So they just parrot what the industry wants. And, and you know, a lot of this is subconscious. The industry will disseminate these talking points and they probably don't even know that they're being unwitting idiots for these uh, these industries. But at the same time, you know, somehow these talking points got into their brains um, and I don't know if management is directly saying you have to say this talking point, but either way, it doesn't matter. 
Like it's, it's untrue. And you see that it's really crystal clear when you have a progressive like crystal ball here. Because people think that they can. We, look, I, I wish we were all off fossil fuels forever. Sure. But the, the truth is that when people get off fossil fuels before they have a replacement, they wind up going back to even worse fossil fuels. Germany said, we don't want nuclear power yep. anymore. Yep. That's which is true. the cleanest. Yep. That's true. And what did they have to go back to? Coal. And Russian and then, gas. And basically the same thing happened here. We said, Saudi Arabia, go fuck yourself, you killed a journalist. And now Biden is going over there, hat in hand, begging them for oil. Because people yeah, want their gas. Which is pathetic. And by the yep. way, the only issue with oil is not just supply and demand. Because as I was just saying, we actually have a fairly significant amount of supply. It isn't at, you know, extraordinarily low levels if you look at the recent past. We don't have an extraordinary amount of demand. We're not even back to pre-pandemic levels. You do have a massive amount of Wall Street speculation that is also causing an increase in gas prices. Yeah. So again, this is what I'm saying, that the gouging. only people who are talking about and that, some people and there's are, a lot of price gouging. There's a lot of gouging. So you ask and whether... always depend on them to gouge. You ask whether Biden is not pandering to the left enough for too much, or whatever. This the left are the only ones talking about those issues, about the fact that you have monopolies that have jacked up prices far above what they need to because they can, because they can use the excuse of ex inflation. And mm -hmm. CEOs are bragging on earnings calls I mean, about how they've lifted prices okay. the, and gouged consumers, right. and we're not, not doing anything head. about it. Oh, God. So, look, that was great because... They couldn't do anything but nod their head in disagreement and, you know, nod disapprovingly. She has facts. You have fuck all, my dude. So, look, if you want to see um, basically her full panel appearance, if you go to Case Study QB on Twitter, um, he's uploaded most of it. So definitely be sure to uh, check it out. He does a great service for leftists and he gets all of the best clips. Um, so you don't have to subscribe to HBO to watch this. Uh, while we're talking about Crystal Ball, uh, I will plug my appearance on uh, Crystal Kyle and Friends from last week. I went on the show and um, yeah, I think it was a great appearance. I'm really thankful that they brought me on. But yeah, overall, phenomenal appearance. This is why we need more leftists on mainstream media because their viewers for the first time hear arguments that they haven't heard but that's also simultaneously why these pundits like bill maher don't invite lefties on that frequently it's because these arguments contradict what they're saying and even if you know they don't necessarily have a stake in these companies for example like bill maher he isn't like you know he's not making some pro corporate argument because he wants to get rich off of them but it's embarrassing to have someone contradict everything that you're saying he probably doesn't even realize that he's parroting what he hears off of MSNBC and Fox News you know but either way he is doing it and he you know he sounds foolish and he doesn't want to sound foolish which is why he probably won't bring on Crystal Ball ever again uh because you know she she knows her shit so yeah that's what I'll say about this I won't play any more because I'm already kind of pushing it but Go watch the whole thing. It was just incredible. Great job to Crystal Ball. This is what we need to see. Um, we need more lefties to get on mainstream media and push back in this way because I think that is the key to winning people over. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. <laughs> So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.